Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's talk today in history and share with you some of the things that happened today on the 16th of March uh, many, many years ago. I'm going back to um, uh, Uganda, actually, and uh, this is interesting because on this you know, same program, we've shared the story of a, a, a religious sect that you know, did something similar somewhere in Europe and of course uh, led to the, um, uh, the death of hundreds of people who were poisoned mm -hmm. uh, by their sect leader. But this one happened in Uganda and it was from something called, or a sect called, the Movement for the Restoration of the Ten Commandments of God. Mm. It was a religious movement founded by, I need to read their names, Credonia Murendi, or Merinde, I beg your pardon, and Joseph Kibwetere in southwest Uganda in the late 1980s after they claimed to have seen a vision of the Virgin Mary. In the early 2000s, followers of this religious movement died in a fire and, of course, poisoning and stabbing um, or close to 500 of them. It was later, of course, it was you know, initially seen as group suicide, but it was later found out that you know, it was a mass murder. And this happened because, you know, apparently the leaders of this sect had predicted the apocalypse to happen on a particular date. And when it failed, um, they, of course, out of shame, decided, you know, it was best to, you know, kill their followers. Um, they, of course, thought that they, to avoid the damnation um, of the apocalypse. And, you know, the, the, the extra details of being in the sect was that they, they made you fear for any reason breaking any of the Ten Commandments. It was that strict, or it was so strict that members of the sect... Um, at times, you, you know, refused to speak because they didn't want to break the Eighth Commandment that thou shalt not bear false witness against uh, their neighbor. And so instead of speaking, they communicated in sign language. That's how powerful this sect was, or that's how powerful the indoctrination into the sect, you know, um, got them. Um, fasting was conducted regularly. I think they only got to eat uh, one meal on Fridays and on Mondays. Sex was forbidden. Also was soap completely forbidden by members of this sect. The movement leaders declared that the apocalypse was going to occur on the uh, 31st of December in 1999. And when that didn't happen, uh, the, of course, movement, uh, the members of the movement became, you know, frenzied and started to, you know, get agitated. And so instead, the leaders, you know, told them that it was time for them to die and that they should start preparing for their end and confess their sins. Um, one of the leaders was seen buying 50 liters of uh, sulfuric acid a couple of days before all of this took place. But sadly, it ended by finding six bodies discovered in a latrine in one of them, uh, one of the leaders' compounds, as, one as, as well as 153 bodies in a compound in Buhunage, another 155 bodies at Dominic Katar, Katari Babo's estate at, um, you know, also in southwest uh, Uganda. They had been poisoned and some of them had been stabbed and, of course, uh, the rest of them died in a fire. Initially, of course, it was seen as a mass suicide, but when further investigations, you know, to the fire, you know, emerged, they, you know, police then realized that it was a, a murder, actually, not a suicide. Um, in 2014, it was a, announced by the Uganda National Police that uh, some of the leaders, there were two of them who escaped and were never found, but it was announced in 2014 that one of them was uh, uh, cited in Malawi. And, um, you know, there's still an, uh, you know, a, a warrant for his arrest, and hopefully, you know, they will be found. But all of this really just points once again to the power of, you know, religion and the, the, the strength, you know, that, you know, religion really carries, and they call it the opium. Uh, the, 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 the fact that not just here in Africa, because of the story that we shared a couple of weeks ago um, about a very similar story, but the fact that religion really can be used to control the minds of hundreds and thousands of people blindly. That's people who want to be blinded. Because really, well, yes, information is, uh, information is something everybody can get access to. I believe that those people actually chose to be in, in certain spaces where they were exposed to people saying those things. You should know, I mean, everybody has a conscience. Everybody has what you also call common sense. I will tell you, this, this actually doesn't make sense, really. And this uh, Ugandan, uh, the name is the Kanungu cult massacre. The Kanungu cult, the massacre was just so terrible. I, I, I watched lots of documentaries about this. 
seen dead bodies, seen yes. skeletons of people being exhumed. Lots of people had been burned to death. They told them that they were going to heaven and that they had to obey the Ten Commandments and that they had seen visions. And then they, every they, 700 people died and the leaders escaped. They're now living comfortably in Malawi. The, the, the site started, you know, with um, you know, claims that they had a vision from the Virgin Mary. And so, you know, that's how they That's started. the thing. You can all, everybody can see visions. Gone are the days where you should think that your pastor or your religious leader, your spiritual leader, is a middleman. It really depends you should on not the level contract. of education. That's, what, that's, that's the education I'm giving now. You should not contract your spiritual life to some pastor. The past, hold on. A pastor is not a middleman. Neither is any other religious body from any other religion a middleman. You have direct access to, if you believe in God, you have a direct access to your God because he created you. It's a direct relationship, whether you see it like, like this or like this. It's a direct relationship. So don't, when you're having issues, you can pray. Don't, do you understand these things? It's when I, you now believe your pastor has supreme power, your pastor has God's phone number, your pastor has your email address to, to Jesus Christ or, or whichever God you believe in. That's when you begin to have things like this and you, you know, look unto your pastors as you know, the savior. Really? Well, so, you know, you can't take away poverty, suffering, and lower, you know, quality of education. You know, those are some of the factors, you know, that make it so easy for people to be indoctrinated. Same thing, you know, in northern Nigeria, how people can get, you know, pulled into uh, terrorism and, and, and the, and the really? rest. It's still, you know, all in that oh space. My. This happened in the year 2000, and you think yes. that about 12 years later, right, um, or 20 years later, rather, you would still, would you won't see things like this. But things like this still happen every day. There are churches that run like cults and people who follow their pastors as though they were slaves. It's just so sad if you're in those kind of court situations. <laughs> we encourage you to seek help, please. All right, today in history, March 17th, 1973. It was in this day in history that Queen Elizabeth II uh, unveiled the third London Bridge. I was about to say the third <laughs> Niger Bridge. All right. So the third London Bridge uh, was constructed, you know, almost a, a thousand uh, in almost a thousand years. Uh, it was 860 feet long. It has three spans. It has six traffic lanes, two broad pedestrian uh, walkways. The second London Bridge was unable to sustain modern traffic. So it was pulled down. It was shipped piece by piece to the United States and it was rebuilt in Arizona. And the first London Bridge, which we all know in the, in the children's song, London Bridge is falling down. That bridge actually stood for almost 600 years. And for centuries, it was the only bridge across the River Thames in London. To open a third uh, London Bridge, Ninja keeps coming to my head. Calm down, girl. <laughs> to open a third London Bridge today in 1974, the Queen actually traveled from Westminster and followed the river route taken by uh, King, uh, King Elizabeth IV. And that's when they opened the second London Bridge 142 years before then. Thousands of children waved flags, you know, they lined the bridge, they were happy. There's a new bridge, you know, opening in London. And when Queen Elizabeth II, you know, was unveiling the bridge, she made a statement, uh, you know, she said, London Bridge may not be the longest, the tallest, or the widest bridge in the world, but I believe, as you do, that it's the most famous, arguably. Uh, meanwhile, the longest bridge in the world is the Dayang Kushan Grand Bridge. It's in China. It took 10,000 men to build that bridge, and it cost $10 billion. It was constructed in the year 2010, but it opened in the year 2010. 11. And that's what happened today in history. Third London Bridge was unveiled uh, in London. 1973. You know, we're, we're still, you know, you know, with the Third Milan Bridge, you know, um, renovations. renovations. Falamore and, Bridge. Uh, Falamore Bridge. To be closed and, uh, soon. <laughs> yes, of course. The Second Niger Bridge, you know, which of course is, you know, mixed with politics and, and, and the likes. Um, but yeah, you know, it's... These it's, are it's, bridges it's, over long, long rivers. We do have a lot to learn. Bridge over And a long waters. way to go, really. All right, 1973 and the year 2000. That's what we have for you today in history. Um, short break. When we come back, we're going into our first major conversation for today. And that is uh, the health crisis in Kano State, where more than 200 people, according to reports, have been hospitalized and three people dead as a result of uh, poisoning. We'll talk about it when we come back. <laughs> 